everyone in this video we are going to be looking at the far not regional mock for that matte paper theory problem number seven which came from the topic rotational dynamics so the first part of the equation is asking us to prove that the moment of initial of a uniform rod of length 2a about an axis intersecting the rod at right angles at a distance b from its center is that quantity m into um one third a squared plus b where m is a mass of the rod and it is allocated for four marks now the second part of the equation is asking us um it reads a thin uniform rod of length 2a and mass m attached to a smooth hinge at one end o is allowed to fall from a horizontal position show that in the subsequent motion 2a times theta dot squared is equal to 3g sine theta where theta is the angle made with the rod and the horizontal and it is allocated for five marks so in this question um in this video sorry i'm going to do just woman one of this question because i don't want the video to be lengthy i'm going to do roman two of this problem in another video and i'm going to um share the the, the video link as well so if you have not subscribed to the channel make sure you subscribe and you turn on your post notifications so that whenever a video is being uploaded to the channel you'll be one of the first persons to receive the video so um, let's get started before that i want to first of all tell you guys that i have made some notes that is brief summary of rotational dynamics that's for the math paper three it's a for the math paper three topic so um it is in pdf form and let me just try to display to you how it looks like it looks like this it's around 19 pages because um, at the end i also included past gc equations just the equations without the solution so you can solve and um if you face difficulties you can get to me so to to get this pdf you can either use my email address you send me a message there that you need a pdf of rotational dynamics or you message me on whatsapp through that number on your um that is dis displayed to your screen so before we solve that roman one problem i'm going to give you guys some basic recalls that is going to help us to solve that problem though i'm going to add some other things that are not going to help us but are going to help you in rotational dynamics in general so let's begin with moment of initial what is it it is simply the measure of a body's resistance to the change in angular velocity so if i give you a clear picture of it if i have a body which is having a mass m it is a point mass now it is rotating with angular velocity omega about a certain axis delta which it is um, distant from that axis by arrow now the moment of initial of my my point mass m about that axis is simply the product of the mass and the square of the distance between the mass and the axis so the moment of initial about the axis of this mass is simply the, the mass of that point mass which is capital m times the square of the distance that is separating the axis and the mass so m arrow squared that's the first point to note now secondly let's see how we can find the moment of initial of a large body because this first case was just a moment of initial of a point mass now a large body now has many of these point masses let's just say it has like n of these point masses now we are going to see how we can find the moment of initial of that large body so i will give the very clear picture we have our axis delta and then we have our large body which contains inf uh, many masses let's not say infinite let's um yeah though it can contain infinite number of masses but um for clarity let's say it contains n masses but i'm just going to represent three masses not to make the diagram to be dirty so the masses the point masses have masses m1 m2 and m3 now m1 is at a distance r1 from my axis delta m2 is at a distance r2 from my axis delta and m3 is at a distance r3 from my axis delta now 
we want to find the moment of initial just assume that there are n masses so you have m1 right up to mn so the distances are going to range from r1 right up to rn so the center of um, sorry the the moment of initial of this whole body about the axis delta is simply the sum of the moments of initials of each mass about that axis now we have already seen how we can find the moment of initial of each mass of a mass about a certain axis so that's the the product of the mass and the square of the distance separating the mass and the axis together so we have m1 times r1 squared plus m2 times r2 squared right up to mn times rn squared so from there we can write it as um, the general formula the summation formula to compress this um, large or long expression so we have i to be equal to the sum from i equal to 1 to n of m i r i squared if m is 1 you have m1 r1 squared if m is 2 you have m2 r2 squared and your summing and so on and so forth so we should take note of that actually in the pdf note i gave some examples and exercises so make sure that if the pdf gets to reach to you you make good use of it because it is very brief and simplified and very understandable all right the third thing we are going to look at is how to find the kinetic energy of a rotating body so i'm still going to consider our first scenario where we have a mass a, a, a body having mass m a small body a point mass of mass m rotating about an axis delta and the distance from the from the point mass to the axis is arrow now how do you find the kinetic energy simply um half mv squared where v is the velocity but in this case it is rotating so we need to make use of its angular velocity but we know that v is equal to omega arrow where omega is the angular velocity r is our distance from the point mass to um the the axis of rotation so from there we simply replace v with omega arrow and it is going to be squared actually by so doing we can have the kinetic energy as half m arrow squared omega squared now we have to express the kinetic energy in function of its moment of initial the kinetic energy of this body as a function of its moment of initial and its angular velocity so uh, originally we said that i is equal to m arrow squared that's it so from there we can see that what this m arrow squared here is our i so by so doing we get kinetic energy to be half times i times omega squared and we are done Thirdly, we are going to look at the um, theorems in moment of initial. So we begin with the first one, the parallel axis theorem. Now I'm going to display to you actually how and why do we use the parallel axis theorem. Now, um, we have a scenario where we have a body as displayed. Now, um, IG is the moment of initial of this body about its center. Let me specify the center of gravity of the body. Next, delta is um, a certain axis and the moment of initial of this body about this axis is I delta, which we want to find because um, we cannot just find it normally like that. So we use the parallel axis theorem, which says that what? That the moment of initial of this body about the axis delta is equal to the sum of the moment of initial of the body about its center of gravity and the mass of the body times the square of the distance that separates the two axes so we are trying to find the moment of initial of this body about the axis delta we have named it i delta but we can find the moment of initial or we know the moment of initial of this body about its center of gravity which is ig so simply the moment of initial of this body about the axis delta which is i delta is simply ig plus the mass of the body times the square of the distance that is separating them in the pdf you're going to see some few examples and better explanations to it 
since this is a video um, i'm just trying not to make the video to be too lengthy so that you can also reduce your cost of megabytes and lastly we are going to look at the perpendicular axis theorem now it says that if i have a body and then with respect to this axis the moment of initial of that body is iz with respect to this axis the moment of initial of that body is iy now if i want to find the moment of initial with respect to this axis i can call it ix simply ix is going to be equal to what iz plus iy why because the perpendicular axis theorem is in in in, in general is saying that what if you know the moment of initial of um of a body about two axes that are perpendicular to each other i want to find the moment of initial of this body about a third axis which is perpendicular to both these two axes then you just simply sum the moment of initial of the um about the two axes that you know and you get the moment of initial of the third axis you see um this axis if i call it the x axis is perpendicular to this y axis and it is also perpendicular to the z axis as well the z axis is perpendicular to the y axis so it fits already in the perpendicular axis theorem and we can use it like i said the pdf has some examples there that you can get better clarifications as well okay so let's begin with um, the solution of problem woman one so here is a problem our objective is to prove that the moment of initial of a uniform rod whose length is 2a about a certain axis that is perpendicular to the rod and it is a distance of b from the center of the rod and m is a mass of the rod is given by that quantity m into one third a squared plus b so let's try to do a, a sketch that is a rough work of of the scenario that is presented to us so i did it already so i'm just going to explain to you um what is required we have a rod now we are finding the moment of initial of this rod about a certain axis that is perpendicular to the rod and it is at a distance of b from the center of the rod so this is my perpendicular axis it is at a distance of b from the center of the rod so clearly we see that we are supposed to use the parallel axis theorem why because we can find the moment of initial of this rod about this axis that is perpendicular to the rod and passing through the center that is about the the axis delta c if we are able to do that which we can do using integration then we can use the parallel axis theorem which says that the moment of initial of this rod about this axis that is perpendicular to the rod distance of b from this axis is simply the moment of initial of the rod about the axis delta c plus the mass of the rod times the square of the distance between the two axes so that's actually what we are supposed to do using the parallel axis theorem so all we are left to do now is to find the moment of initial of this rod about an axis that is perpendicular to the, to, to the rod passing through the center of the rod normally you can get the formula from the formula booklet yes you can get the formula from there and then you just you just impute the mass and the length and you're done but i'm going to show you how to use integration to actually do it because there are some questions that can ask you to prove it using integration so it is very simple make sure you follow up if you have questions you can post in the comment section if you don't understand anything you can post in the comment section okay so let's get to see the various steps that we can use to find the moment of initial of of a rod about any axis using integration so the very first step is to make the sketch of the diagram showing the axis of rotation secondly we divide the whole rod or the body in question into several parts 
of mass delta m and length delta arrow which is at a distance of small arrow from the axis of rotation thirdly we define the constant lambda as the mass per unit length or the mass per unit area or the mass per unit volume of the body now if we are dealing with one dimensional like you see um a rod is in one d that is the, the the thickness of the rod is negligible so we have just the length of the rod that's basically what i'm saying we have just the length of the rod so simply the length of the rod is the highest um quantity so if i want to define lambda and the figure that is my body is one dimensional then lambda is just going to be the mass per unit length now if my body is two dimensional my lambda is going to be the mass per unit area so maybe if my body is two dimensional like um a square a rectangle a triangle and so on and so forth my lambda is going to be the mass per unit area now if my body is a three-dimensional figure let's say a sphere a cone a um parallelopiped a trapezium a pyramid then my lambda is going to be the mass per unit volume so it is either mass per unit length mass per unit area or mass per unit volume so since it is a rod generally we are going to use a mass per unit length because the thickness that is the second dimension of the rod which is the thickness it is negligible all right fourthly we evaluate delta m in terms of lambda and we define its moment of initial delta i fifthly we move now to the total derivative meaning we move from delta m to d from delta i to di and then we move from delta l to dl or delta r to dr by considering the whole body because small delta is a, a, a very small change this is a very small change because we we are dealing with an increment a, a very small part of the body that we took so for the whole body now we need to take the total which is summing as you are going to see um the last but not the least we solve the differential equation for the moment of initial i taking note of the initial conditions and lastly we replace lambda with its expression and we conclude let's dive straight to see how we can use integration to find the moment of initial of a rod about an axis perpendicular to the rod and passing through the center since it is our case in the pdf you are going to see a uh, moment of initial of a rod about an axis that is perpendicular to the rod and passing through one of the ends you are going to see i proof i prove both so uh, make sure you check it out even for a ring even for a dix and so on so we have our rod you see um don't look at the rod as a rec as a rectangle it's just that i want i wanted to make it to be big so that you, you can actually um picture out what is happening because maybe you can look at it as a rectangle no it is not a rectangle it's not a rectangle it has just the, the width is very negligible very small we consider just the length so let me label the the, the rod a b now my axis of rotation i'm following the steps my axis of rotation that's the axis is passing through the center and it is perpendicular to the rod as you can see now next um i will need to indicate the various lengths the first thing to note is that for you to start indicating the various lengths where the that is the axis of rotation is always the initial position so since the rod is having length 2a it means that the distance from a right up to the center of the rod is is going to be small a and the distance from the center of the rod right up to b is going to be a as well because it divides the rod into two equal halves so this here is going to be a because it is from zero to a and since this is um to the left of zero then it is going to be negative a if i add the distances this distance is a and this distance is a so it gives me two a okay now let's start dividing the rod into small increments so i'm just going to take one increment to make it simpler so if i take one increment 
the mass of that increment is delta m1 remember the mass of the rod is capital m so the mass of this increment is delta m1 and the length of the increment is delta r1 and the increment is at a distance of r1 from the center of rotation sorry from the axis of rotation so we now define our lambda to be the mass per unit length so um a typing error so here lambda is actually the mass per unit length and not the mass per unit area so change this to length so lambda being the mass per unit length we have lambda to be let's consider the whole rod so this lambda is actually the same for every increment in this rod that we take so for this small increment the lambda is going to be its mass per unit length if we take um the whole rod the lambda is going to be its mass which is m per unit length and the, the, the length of the rod is 2a now the next thing we now take an increment so if we take the increment delta m is actually delta m1 so if we take the increment delta m1 lambda there is going to give us delta m1 which is its mass divided by its length which is delta r1 okay so from there we get delta m1 to be equal to what lambda times delta r1 according to our step we have to do what evaluate delta m in terms of lambda and then we find its moment of initial so we first of all define lambda as a mass per unit length because it is a rod we do not take area no volume because it is a rod all those other dimensions are negligible so we have expressed delta m1 which is the 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 mass of our small increment in terms of lambda and also delta r1 now next we need to evaluate its moment of initial so for the increment delta m1 the moment of initial is going to be what delta i which is according to our definition or the formula of the moment of initial we take the mass times the square of the distance between that mass and the um and the um, this thing the axis of rotation so delta i is the moment of initial of my small increment delta m so it's going to be equal to what delta m1 which is its mass times it is separated at the distance r1 so remember here is actually r1 so times r1 squared that's the moment of initial now what do we need to um replace with delta m1 is lambda delta r1 that's it because delta m1 is lambda delta r1 times r1 squared so i, I actually place the r1 there so from there we can write it as lambda r1 squared delta r next we move to the total derivative so we now consider the whole rod so if i take the whole rod it means i'm taking di it's going to be what i'm going to be summing because this is just one one increment there are many increments inside here so if i move to the whole rod it means that i am going to be summing these small deltas so delta i1 plus delta i2 plus delta i3 and so on and so forth so um doing that the small delta r will change to the arrow so that's not really important it's, you're, you're not really actually to show it you just need to understand why it is like that so di is equal to lambda arrow squared the arrow so from there we now move to solving this is a first order differential equation and we can solve for i now the initial conditions our arrow is beginning from negative a right up to a so our arrow is what is the length of this rod the arrow is the length of the rod actually because this r1 is um the length of a, a, a certain increment so arrow is the length of the rod which begins from negative a right up to a so from there if you integrate both sides integrate the left hand side you get i integrate the right hand side lambda is a constant now r we are, we are integrating with respect to r so it is from negative a right up to a now basically fundamental theorem of calculus integrating r squared we get r cube on 3 now we impute our limits of integration imputing we um, have a cube on 3 minus negative a cube on 3 and we get 2a cube on 3 times lambda now lastly what are we doing we are replacing the value of lambda which is m on 2a because it is for the whole rod 
So replacing the value of lambda, we get i to be 2 a cube on 3 times lambda, which is m on 2a. 2a, here you're going to have 2a squared. So, I'm um, sorry, 2 is going to cancel and you're going to have a squared. So finally, we get the moment of initial of our rod of mass capital M and length 2a about an axis perpendicular to the rod and passing through the center as m a squared on 3. So that is it. But our question is asking us to what? Find the moment of initial. So we now use our parallel axis theorem. So we are finding the moment of initial of this rod about this axis delta, that is the axis, which is at a distance of B from the center of the rod. So we are going to get I delta, which is what we are looking for, to be equal to I delta C, which is this I here, plus the mass of the rod times the square of the distance between the two axes or the square of the distance that separates the two axes. So from there, we get our I delta to be equal to I because I replaced I delta C with I then plus MB squared. So from there, we get I delta to the MA cube on 3, which is I as we got earlier plus MB squared. So that was the essence of getting this one because getting it, we now use our parallel axis theorem to get the moment of initial that we want. So from there, we can factor out M and we get M in. So um, yes, actually, a squared and not a cube so we should take note because a a cube divided by a is a squared so it means our delta m is um, m into one third a squared plus b and that is it for the proof so see you guys in the next video for roman 2 which we are now going to um explain further about rotational dynamics that is giving the recalls first before solving the problem so that you better understand it if you face difficulties, you can post your questions on the comment section or you get to me through WhatsApp as I earlier give my number or through my email address. Anyone is preferable or the comment section. I'm always there to reply. Thank you.